bless you. It's good to know that uh, this is another wonderful day standing in the gap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We bless you for this grace to preach the gospel, to talk about the goodness of God, to declare a word. Holy Spirit, come and help us and come and speak through me. I decrease that you increase. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Have your way, oh Lord, have your way. what he did on their way out of Egypt after 430 years in bondage. He made a way at the Red Sea and God's people were able to pass. And that same God in this dispensation is going to make a way for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We are looking at what I call the God of restoration. The God of restoration. Amen. Amen. Uh, restoration means that by venture, uh, something was lost and God is bringing back. God is re helping you to regain freedom, regain your health, regain your sight. God is helping you, you know, restoring your business, restoring your children's, uh, uh, restoring their, 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 their life back. Uh, the world is in a state of, uh, that needs literally restoration. They need restoration. Of businesses, restoration of uh, you know the health of mankind. Uh, the, the entire globe is suffering from a you know, pandemic, and it has caused untold hardship. You know, to, uh, uh, living from from ranging from the governments to families to businesses uh, to churches. 
that we need God's hand upon our lives. Hallelujah. So I want to believe that in this season, as we're about to you know, come out of uh, this pandemic, that God is going to restore us in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're believing God for restoration, shout hallelujah. In a way, we are tied down, you know, we can't do the kind of things that we, we used to do. Families don't go on vacations and, you know, they don't go on camps. Schools are restricted. They can't go out because of the fear. Of course, you know, uh, the, the reality of uh, COVID-19 is still very high in the United States and all over the world. In some places, it might be less, but people are very still keeping social distance. You know, still wearing face masks. If you go to a public place, you see it out there written clearly that you, by law, you cannot get into that facility. Uh, in a shopping mall, if you don't have a face mask, whether you're going to do your nail, you're doing, going to cut hair, uh, you're going to, you know, fix, even to fix your car, uh, there's a requirement, even by the state, the law of Maryland, and many of the laws in this country that you have to have a facial covering, you know, you know, a face mask. And that you have to keep, you know, a distance, you know, to even accept this your immediate family. So, but, but I believe God, that God is about to move and shift us from this uh, uh, plague that has plagued the entire world, that has killed over 160,000 Americans and stay counting. I believe that uh, it's going it's, it to be going to, it, it's having a negative curve you know, very soon in the name of Jesus. I want to believe that God, the hand of God is beginning to, you know, interject and, you know, um, hear our cry. We've been praying for, for, for months now and asking God for mercy, asking God, you know, for his help, asking God for to, to, to help us to fight this plague. Wherever it's coming from, uh, it is not, you know, pal pal palatable with human being. Hallelujah. So we're looking at God of restoration. The book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, verse 25. And I will restore to you the years. I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. So God has angels that are going to bring restoration to man. And the can the can the, 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 the palmer worm, the canker worm. And the caterpillar those are devourers those are you know devourers that have entered into you know uh into the land and have eaten people's blessing eating people's you know useful years there are some people who, who have gone into businesses and all of a sudden a hurricane came or a tornado came or some kind of epidemic came and just devoured the business and collapsed the business like this pandemic now you know has devoured so many business and they may have come in the form of uh, 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 COVID-19, but it's a devourer. And many businesses, even they are saying that they cannot even, they can't even restart. They can't, the business is closed. They are not, they don't have, no, they don't have many more customers. And uh, people are not even very, you know, you know, they're not excited to go out to eat out and to do the things that they used to do. So God is going to bring restoration to, to families. Uh, how about the, you know, man of God, how about the people that have lost their lives? You know, you see, God is a good God. Uh, he has a way of, you know, uh, bringing peace in the in the uh, uh, in the place of uh, mourning. Hallelujah! So the first uh, of the restoration we're going to look at is the restoration of resources in the life of Job. Job was a man that feared God. Job was a man that issued evil. Job was a man that the Bible called from the east. A man that was wealthy, very, very wealthy. You know, when you are wealthy and you fear God, it's a combination that the devil doesn't want to see. That means the devil cannot, but the devil now started attacking him with his health, attacking his family, and, you know, attacked his family, attacked his health, and attacked his business. His business, you know, went underwater. His family lost his family. He lost everything, you know, in the space of a very short time. But the Bible told us in the book of uh, Job chapter 42, verse 10, Job chapter two. Job started doing an unusual thing. You know, his friends blamed him because of the you know, maybe because he has sinned against God. He has done some things. You know, we know about his wife. We begin to read from verse, chapter two. His wife cursed. He said, "Cursed God and die because you're not even worth living." You know, some people say, "Oh, because he wanted to under, uh, he wanted to remarry because he could not stand the man." But the truth is that Job was in a state where he would have denied God, but he did not deny God. 
instead he you know he he, he even regretted his father. The Bible says he even cursed himself. He, he took his anger to himself. He said, Cursed be the day he was born. You know, he regretted everything. But at the end of the day, when he get to Job 42, the last chapter in the book of Job, Job began to pray for his friends. He said, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he be, when he prayed for his friends. Do you know what it means to pray for the people that despised you? People that, you know, accuse you and said you must have done something wrong. There must be something, there must be a kind of sin that you committed. That is why you are having all this kind of calamity. So, but even in all that, Job prayed for his friends. And as soon as Job prayed for his friends, if I look at what happened, you know, after that uh, colon, he says, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Let's go to verse number 11. Verse 11 and read further and see what good. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. This is this is restoration taking place. People that were that had never gave you see, when you begin to see people who have never given you anything before, people who are tight-fisted, there are people that are so rich, they might be for your family members, but their hand is so tight-fisted that it will, will only take God to touch their heart before they can release what is in their hands. It means that the restoration is taking place. When you begin to get money from sources that you have you have no idea, or places that you have discounted and say nothing is coming from here, even though they are rich, but they don't care about anybody, and all of a sudden they begin to look at you and begin to help you. It means there's a restoration that is taking place. And that is what's happening here in the life of Job. Look at verse number 12. Verse number 12. This is the man that lost everything. So that the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. So the Lord now blessed the later part of his life. May God bless the later part of your life. Even as we are moving out of this COVID-19 season, it's a very, very tragic season that has killed and devoured lives, businesses, families. But I pray in the name of Jesus that the latter part of this year, from this August to, to towards all the way to December, that the Lord shall bless you, that, that the rest of your life shall be the best of your life. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a, and a, and a thousand she asses. Let's continue to verse number 13. Hallelujah. Verse number 13. And he had seven sons and three. And, all, and, and the Bible said Job you know, saw his children's children. I think up to almost the fourth generation. I think Job lived about 440 or 145 years. Amen. So you see, God now uh, restored Job after he began to pray for his friends. So we cannot, you, you know, uh, when we talk about prayer, we know that that is the channel how we communicate with God. But this was a selfless prayer. He wasn't praying for himself. He was praying for his friends, people that despised him. And as God saw in his heart that he was selfless, that he wasn't somebody that was self-centered about himself, he wasn't even, you know, talking about the things about him. As soon as he began to pray for his friend, God now began to restore him. As you begin to intercede for others, as you begin to pray for nations and pray for churches, pray for men of God, women of God, as you begin to pray for your family members, even those that despise you, those that don't agree agree with you. Those that made fun of you, as you begin to pray for them, God will restore your destiny, restore your businesses, restore all your lost grounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout the believing amen. amen. So we see that there was a restoration of dignity. The, the, the dignity of the, the of Job was restored. His family, God gave him a new family. God gave him double for all his trouble. God gave him, in the book of Isaiah 61 verse 7, the Bible says God will give you double for all your trouble. If you have been trouble on every side, if you have been ashamed, God, if the enemy has put you to shame, the Bible says, for the, I'm reading Isaiah 61 verse 7, for your shame you shall have double. 
So if you have ever had shame in any area, shame in your ministry, shame in your you know, business, you, you know, your shame in your family, God is going to give you double for your shame. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. If you have ever been confused, God will restore you back with rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. God is saying that in this season, you are going to possess a double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. That is, God is going to bring joy. Sorrow will disappear. The Bible says, weeping may endure for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. I speak to somebody that is hearing that your joy is coming in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we saw in the life of Job, there was a restoration of of finances, restoration of health. Okay, another restoration we're going to be looking at is restoration of health in the book of Jeremiah 30, verse 17. And this is very important because many people have lost health. You know, uh, some people have issues with breathing, you're having issue uh, with your lungs, you're having any kind of uh, pandemic, you know, related symptoms, any kind of breathing issue in terms of pain, headache, anything at all, your lungs, your liver, that the good Lord will restore your health. God is in the business of restoration. God will give you rest. You will no longer be restless. Safe. But if ye will not hear it, amen. So I'm talking about uh, 3017, Jeremiah 3017. You know, God will restore your health, restoration of health. God will restore your health. Jeremiah 30, verse number 17. Hallelujah. Let's go. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. You have, you have 13, 17 on the screen. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. I will what? Restore. I will restore health. That which you have lost. That area that the enemy has taken. That area that you have been visiting the doctors and they are saying there's no way you are going to live on medication. That area, that part of your life that the enemy has stolen from you. The Bible says, "White man slept. The enemy came and stole. When that area, God will restore you in the name of Jesus. As we are speaking, you will not understand the grace that you have. That you wake up, you can see. You wake up, you can open your mouth and talk. Some people cannot talk. Some people cannot see as you're speaking. Some people cannot feed normally. They have to feed them through test tube. But God is going to restore health. Some point that is hearing me this wonderful evening, my God will restore your health in that area that the enemy has stolen your health. God will restore you in the name of Jesus. Say, I will restore health unto thee. That is the word for somebody. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. So any area you are wounded, my God will heal you of that wound. In the mighty name of Jesus. There's a saying that goes that the doctors treat, but this God that heals, my God will heal you because when God heals you, you will not, you will not have a will not experience that pain that cancer will vanish that issue of the blood will now become vanished in the name of Jesus the Bible says the Lord will heal you of your wounds says the Lord because they call thee an outcast people are saying you are an outcast saying this is Zion whom no man seeketh after but my God is going to bring restoration of your health in the name of Jesus there's a God that can heal the Jehovah our Jehovah Rapha our healer is going to heal you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout a believing amen. amen. There is also restoration of marriage. You know, in the case of the life of Abraham, Abraham sojourned to Zerah, he asked to Tugera. And when there was a famine, he now stated that his wife was his sister because he was afraid, because his wife was, was so beautiful that he thought that they would just kill him. If that was his own wisdom that they will kill him and take his wife. Amen. So he lies. Well, that's my sister. Because if he says his sister is easy, it's okay, that's a sister. So we can have your sister. And that was what happened. The king took the king, Abimelech took the sister, and guess what? God was God now intervened. God intervened and afflicted everybody in the house of Abimelech. Abimelech was sick, his wife was sick, his children, everybody was sick. And God visited Abimelech in the book of Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. He said that that man, that man, he, that, is, that is a man's wife, that you are the dead man if you don't restore back. You know, Abraham is wife. And of course, Abimelech woke up in the morning and told Abraham, why didn't you tell us that it was your wife? You, would have, you know, I would have, I would have dated your wife. I would have slept with your wife. 
Amen. But guess what? Abimelech now did not only restore, if you read all the way to verse, you know, to the other verses, Abimelech did not only restore uh, uh, Abraham, his wife, he now gave him silver, he gave him uh, cattle, and then he, and there was like a transfer of wealth. I pray in this season that God is going to restore your family. He's going to restore your marriage. If your marriage has been facing the rock, the, your, you know, he will have hit the rocks. I pray in the name of Jesus. The rock of ages will restore back that marriage in the name of Jesus. What the enemy meant for evil will turn out to come to your good in the name of Jesus. You will no longer struggle. You no longer weep over your husband, over your wife in the mighty name of Jesus. There was a a transfer of wealth. Hallelujah. May God transfer wealth in this season. I speak of wealth transfer. The Bible says the wealth of the Gentiles are laid for the just. That means that which God has ordained for you. God will transfer wealth in your business in the name of Jesus. I don't know how God is going to do it, but I'm prophesying to somebody's business, somebody's destiny, that God is going to transfer a wealth that you never expected in the name of Jesus. I pray for expected and unexpected income. Shall locate your location in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shall be big amen. Somebody expecting something shall be big amen. For the endless expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Also, we will also look at the restoration of soul. In this season, many people who have abandoned God, there will be a restoration of soul. Where you have departed, your soul has departed from God. But because of the fear and the seasons that we are, uncertainty, is going to create, create an atmosphere where people will begin to seek for their God. Where people will begin to Return to God. David said in the book of Psalm 23, verse 3, The Lord restored my soul. There is nothing bigger than your soul. Jesus Christ said, What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? That means soul is the most prized commodity in the spiritual market. Amen. Devil is after your soul. The heaven also places a demand upon your soul. So your soul is very vital, very relevant to heaven. Your soul is is that was why Jesus Christ said, What shall he profit? What, what shall he profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? There are people who have exchanged you know everything for their soul and not knowing that the word the devil has taken from them is the most treasured, you know, uh, the treasured commodity that the devil took. The devil gave them money and took their soul. The devil gave them faith and took their soul. The devil gave them power and took their soul. But Jesus said that what can a man give in an exchange for his soul? And that was why David said, restore my soul. He restored my soul. And when God restores your soul, then he begins to lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He will begin to lead you in the path that is right before God. I pray in this season, there will be a restoration of soul in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, my God will restore your de de destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will restore your spiritual soul, your Bible reading. You have not been able to read Bible. Each time you open your Bible, you fall asleep. The Lord will restore your soul in the name of Jesus. God will increase your ability to read the word of God. God will empower you and strengthen you to pray without ceasing. You begin to fast so that your life can go fast and be on the right track in the name of Jesus. Those things that you have backslidden from, God will make you to begin to pray, begin to fast, begin to read, and your, your eyes will begin to open to see the things in the realm of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. So there will be a restoration of your soul. Your soul speaks about your mind, your emotion, your thoughts, and your intellect. God will awaken and broaden your horizon in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 also tells us that when you see somebody who has fallen into sin, somebody who has gotten weak, that you that is strong should strengthen that person. Pull up that brother. Pull up that sister. Don't allow the enemy to, don't allow her to sink in the valley. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, which 
is which are spiritual restore such an one in the spirit restore such a one in the spirit of meekness hallelujah considering thyself lest thou also be one tempted so when you are standing and you see somebody who has fallen somebody who is weak someone who is leading it is your responsibility as a child of god to look for that person and restore the person back in the mighty name of jesus christ somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah there will also be a restoration of men and women of God. You have been serving God. You have been believing God for years. I want to believe God for His word in this season. There is going to have we have gone through all kinds of trial, go all kinds of challenges. Maybe your church has closed down. Maybe your man have given up. Maybe people have left the church. Maybe people have abandoned you. You have invested a lot, but you have seen little. But I want to believe God for His word that His word never returns void. The Bible says, Forever, O Lord, that word is settled in heaven. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 10. In the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible speaks about restoration after you have toiled, after you have suffered, after you have gone through all kinds of challenge. He said, But the God of grace, 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 10. But the God, the God of all grace, beloved, there is the God of all grace. You know, the Bible talks about more grace, it talks about exceeding grace. It talks about abundant grace. Amen. But now here in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10, the, the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. You are called by Christ Jesus. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish you, strengthen and settle you. In some version it says restore you. You have lost a lot. You have given a lot. You have paid your tithe. You have given prophetic offering. You have given to the widow. You have given to church building. You have given to old women. You have given to children. You have sold. You have been so faithful. God is saying you may have suffered, but God is going to establish you. My God is going to strengthen you. He's going to settle and restore all that you have lost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Restoration of nations. God is also going to restore nations. Nations that have become upon God. Nations that may have backslidden and realize that they have forsaken their God. Nations that are seeking to return back to their God. Let's look at the book of Amos chapter number 9 verse 14. The book of Amos chapter 9 verse 14. Hallelujah. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel. God said, I'm going to restore them. And they shall build the waste cities. All the areas that the enemies has wasted. God said, I'm going to build them. And inhabit them. When they are built, they will be inhabited. And they shall plant vineyards. He's talking about your businesses. And then they shall drink the wine thereof. That means you are going to eat and be satisfied. And they shall also make gardens and eat of the fruit of then that means you are going to do what that which you have labored for and the enemy came by back door and took it god is going to restore all those waste areas and you are going to inhabit your house inhabit your business and you are going to profit from what you have sown in the mighty name of jesus Amen. let's look at the book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12. Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12 also speaks of restoration of people that the enemy has put in captivity. Restoration of those who have gone into prison. Zechariah chapter 9 verse number 12. The book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse number 12. God is going to restore those who have been captured legally. Those who the devil has held captive, held hostage. God is going to restore them in the name of Jesus. Zechariah is Z E. Mazuta Laki Zate Kajata. Zeka Baba Zute Kibalaban. Lazete Baba Zetubala. Mazete Braka Kazatam. Lakuda. Open your close your eyes and listen. You say, My father, that which the enemy has stolen from me. Let there be a restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Restoration of my blessing. Restoration of my career in the mighty name of Jesus. Jazate Kozate Baba Zetin. Zusati Kali. Kazete bra kazete, Jesus to my labor zatim, Jesus to kaki bajete bra kazatam, Zikazate baba jote kuzate, Zoki bara kazatam. In 
Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. He said, turn you to the stronghold. I'm reading Zechariah 9 verse 12. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will render double unto you. I will restore unto you what the devil has stolen from you. God will restore you. Maybe you have been accused. Maybe the enemy has stolen something from you. God said, I'm going to restore you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will restore you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. There's going to be a turn around. Hallelujah. God is going to turn things around. In the book of Zechariah 9, 12, the new the new King James Version is what speaks about restoration of destiny, destiny restoration. That is that which the enemy has thought that he has won. God is going to give you a victory, dance a victory song in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I see help coming from above concerning your life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. The Lord God who has made heaven and earth is bringing hell from above in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, we not suffer your foot to be moved. God will not allow the enemy to move you anymore. He said, behold, he that keepeth you will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. God will not go asleep. He has never slept while his people are struggling or in provision. God is going to restore. By restoration we mean a makeover. God will cause a makeover. There will be a remodeling in your destiny. There will be a renovation. God is going to renovate the lapidated house. God is going to renovate your destiny. My, by restoration, God is going to rehabilitate that which the enemy has destroyed. The God that used Nehemiah to rebuild the world of Israel and used Ezra to rebuild the temple of Israel is going to help you to restore everything that the thief, the cacawan, and the parawan have taken this from you in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be an overhauling. Walk and lick. I'm even sensing it here. There's going to be an overhauling. Overhauling of your business. God will give you ideas. God will give you divine visitation. God will give you wisdom. In this season, there's going to be a transformation. There's going to be a turnaround. There's going to be a divine lifting. By restoration, we are talking about divine updating. Repairing what the devil has destroyed. God is going to turn things around. God will bring you up to date, up to speed. Where you are lost. Maybe in your career you are behind. Maybe your certification is outdated. Maybe your resume has gone to the archives. God is going to restore you. God is going to restore your destiny. He's going to restore your business. He's going to restore your ministry. He's going to restore your children. He's going to upgrade your children. He's going to upgrade your wisdom. He's going to turn things around. God is going to make a way. I see God making a way where there is no way. He specializes in making a way. We are men say there is a casting down. You should be saying there is a lifting up. When men say it is over, that means God just started with you. Father, I give you praise because of the divine restoration, divine rest, rest on all sides. The Bible said the Lord shall increase your greatness and it shall comfort you on every side. I see my God comforting your family. I see Holy Ghost helping you. I see God turning things around. He said, weeping may endure for a moment. In his favor, his life. But joy coming in the morning. Joy coming into your marriage. Joy coming into your family. Joy coming into your business. Joy coming into your church. The Lord is turning things around. I can see him turning things around. I can see God blessing you from Zion. I can see God making things to work for you. All things work together for good. For them that love God and that the call according to his purpose, may God turn things around for you in this season in the name of Jesus. When they came out of bondage, God gave them favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. May my God who give you favor, no more labor. You are not in a favor season. You have been laboring for years. The Egyptians, the Egyptians put a hard task. They made the, 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 the Jews to work with vigor. They made them to work in hard bondage. But after that oppression, because oppression makes a wise man mad, after the oppression, they came out with substance. They came out with treasure. You are coming out of anywhere they have put 
to you. You are coming out of any place that have mocked you, any place that have boxed you. They have boxed you to the corner. They have hidden your treasure. They are trying to see down your glory. My God is making a way for you. Where there is no way, because He makes a way in the rest. Ola kazate tabojata, sheka rabrazete ko zaka nikazitan, jazete kere jazetin. There is a restoration of your soul coming upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. People are coming to church again to serve God. People are returning back to 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 to, to reckon with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. He will also restore your strength. Any area you have lost strength. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 1. Isaiah 40 verse 31 I mean. Isaiah 40 verse 10. Let's start from verse 29. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 to verse 31. My God is, is going to restore your strength. Maybe you are weak. You are weary. You are downtrodden. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are slumbered in so many areas. He said he gave it power to the faith. And to them that have no no might, he increases their strength. So strength can be increased. Just as you can increase the thermometer, you can increase the AC. God is going to increase your strength. In the name of Jesus, let's look at verse 30 and verse 31. My God is going to give you power. For those that faint, he's going to strengthen you. He said, behold, the Lord, the Lord God will be we come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule with Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30 and 31. Even the youth shall faint, but he but be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord are there people waiting up. Yes, this COVID-19 has forced people to wait upon the Lord. This COVID-19 has forced people to search for the Bible. This COVID-19 has forced people to connect online with the things of God because even government has failed and that is obvious. Government has failed, medicine has failed, science, society has failed. The only thing left that never failed is the word of God. He said forever, oh Lord, the word is settled in heaven. No controversy over the word of God. No dispute over God's word. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That means strength can expire. Just like your registration expired. Just like your driver's license passport expired. Your, 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 your documents can expire. But God, even strength can also expire. Somebody, all of a sudden, that used to be very vigorous, very you know, up and doing, all of a sudden now is struggling to wake up in the morning. My God is going to renew your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, strength from on high is coming upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, they shall mount up with wings as eagle. In the mighty name of Jesus, because eagles are very powerful birds. Eagles are very powerful. They shall run and they shall not be weary, and they shall walk and they shall not faint. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say, I will mount up as eagles. My God will renew my strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, the God that renewed the strength of Caleb will renew your strength in the name of Jesus. Any limb, any tendons, any any area of your, like your cataracts, any area you're losing eyesight, your eyes are beginning to go dim, the west is beginning to you know, try to pop out. My God will restore your west, will restore your strength. Any issue of arthritis, my God will cause them to disappear in the name of Jesus. My God will strengthen you and help you from on high in the name of Jesus. No more weariness, no more fainting because strength is coming upon you. There's going to be a renewal of strength in the mighty name of Jesus. Many times when you renew your registration, he says it's good for the next two years. But my God will renew your strength and it shall be good for many years to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Laba shete kosa tebaba, zoba shetu kaledi, there will be restoration of blessing, restoration of businesses, restoration of health, restoration of marriages, restoration of souls in the name of Jesus. 
in the book of Psalm number 51, verse 12. Let's go to Psalm 51, verse number 10. We're reading all the way to verse number 12. Psalm 51, Psalm 51, verse from verse number 10, 11, and 12. David wrote about God to create in me a clean heart. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Amen. Amen. In this season, we need a creation or recreation of a clean heart. He said, I renew. You see that word renew comes up again. He said, renew a right spirit within me because many people are carrying the wrong spirit. You see, when you carry the wrong spirit, you do have a wrong attitude, wrong character. Everything will become wrong because from the spirit realm rules the physical realm. Amen. He said, renew a right spirit within me. Yeah? Hallelujah. Cast me not away from thy presence. The devil is a custodian of bad and evil spirit. So it comes to bring weariness, worry, you know, people become downcast, downtrodden, and even though they might look as if everything is okay, things are working, but because they have a bad spirit, so they begin to, you know, anything, when you say something to them, their response is not the kind of thing that you would like to see. Hallelujah! Because there's a bad spirit. When you have the bad spirit, it comes out by your what you vocalize. It comes out by what you speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the, 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 the mouth will speak it. So when you have a right, wrong spirit, when you are carrying the wrong attitude because you have a wrong spirit, the outcome will be bad. It will be terrible. People will see you as a very angry man. They will see you as a very confrontational person. They will see you as a very argumentative person. They will see you as somebody that nobody wants to relate because you are not pleasant. You are quarrelsome. You are very, very, you know, in, uh, your, your engagement is always very, very oppressive. You, 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 you vocalize negative words. Words that are not joyful. So, but when you have the right spirit, when you have the good spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit, it brings the joy of the Lord. You speak, you, you, you speak words that are pleasant. You speak words that are edifying. You speak words that are right. Hallelujah. Right spirit, right words. Wrong spirit, wrong words. Hallelujah. He said, cast me not away from thy presence. Why? Because David knew that in, the, in his presence is fullness of joy and there are pleasures evermore. And take not thy holy spirit from me. David bears in Psalm 51, in verse number 12. He began to speak. He said, restore unto me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. That means salvation can be lost when there is no more joy. That salvation becomes questionable. That salvation you know, becomes a suspect. So David asked God, say, restore unto me the joy. Because salvation comes with joy. Salvation comes, comes with peace. Salvation comes with righteousness. And I think Ron Kimmery, you know, sang righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And he says, restore unto me. That means, let me bring back that which was lost. Bring back the joy of thy salvation. Bring back the peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. In this season, many people may not, may, they may not have lost jobs, but they have lost their peace. They have lost their joy. So, there will be a restoration of joy when you come to salvation. When you come to the pool of Bethesda, there will be a restoration of the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you want to see strength, you must operate in the realm of joy. If you want to operate in strength, you must be joyful and thankful. If you're not joyful and thankful, you must become a fool fool. Amen. Hallelujah. Thankful. A man of God, one man of God says, thankful. Amen. You don't become, want to become like a tank that is, you know, this fool. But you want to become thankful and joyful. Hallelujah. And when you are joyful, it is going to people around you and it's contagious. Many people around you begin to begin to laugh again, begin to smile again. When you see somebody, the first thing you want to do is you want to celebrate the person with joy because you know you cannot give what you don't have. But when you have the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength. People cannot put you down because you're already lifted. Amen. And when you are lifted by grace, nobody can disgrace you. He said, and uphold me with the free spirit. This spirit is free. This spirit brings freedom. The Bible speaks about, I think the second, 
and Corinthians 3:17. He said, The Lord is the Spirit. Amen. The Lord is what? The Spirit. And where there is the Spirit of God, there is liberty. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. So the joy of the Lord is an evidence of the Spirit of God. It brings freedom. David said in Psalm 51 verse 12, he says, you know, you know, give me a free spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible, and Jesus Christ said it also. He said, where the Spirit of God is, there is what? There is liberty. Amen. And if the Son of the Man sets you free, you are free indeed. So restoration. Let's go back to Psalm 51 verse 12. So there will be a restoration of, of your joy, of your salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Hallelujah. Create in me a free love. Oh Lord. And when your right spirit within me create in me create restoration of your joy. The most important thing is the joy of the Lord and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. As a human being we are in three dimensions. Well, we have the dimension of your spirit, the dimension of your soul, and the dimension of your body. So if your spirit is troubled, every other area is troubled. Amen. Hallelujah. And because you, you know, the hierarchy is the spirit, then the soul and the body. So if the spirit is affected, the soul and the body will be affected. Amen. So your spirit must, if you're not a born again, if you're not a child of God, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, amen. And what you have is the other spirit, then every other thing will be affected. Every your soul will be affected. Your 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 if, if that's why some people are they go to church, don't have the spirit of God. They, they're trying to do this by, by themselves. They're trying to live right. They're trying to live holy. They're trying to do things, but they cannot. By strength shall no man prevail. But if you submit yourself to the Lord, then the Holy Ghost comes into you. He gives you, you know, the enablement. He gives you the grace to live a life of fulfillment. Because everything flows from the Spirit. Amen. And that's why if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it's going to be challenging for you to understand the Word of God. You cannot understand the Word of God with the carnal spirit because the, 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 the 40 authors that wrote the Bible, you know, books of the Bible, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it takes the dimension of the Spirit to understand the Word of God because the Word of God is letters but it's spirit backed up. Amen. So our, if you are here today or you're listening and you have you know, backslidden, you have lost your joy, you've lost your peace, you know, and you have lost your your your, your footings, you know, in the in the, in the vineyard of God. I want to pray for you so that God can restore back that which you have lost. The most important thing, your soul. Amen. And give you the right spirit. I would like you to pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sinful life. 
I'm sorry for the kind of life I've lived, a life of sin, a life of wickedness, a life of dishonesty, disobedience, lies, you know, envy and cheating. Lord, I ask for mercy. Father, have mercy upon me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sin before you and I renounce them. I forsake them. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God and God raised you from the dead. Help me, Lord Jesus, with your right spirits. Let Bring the Holy Spirit in me. Help me to be able to overcome the challenges of this world. Friends, if you have said that you are a child of God and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and that Spirit will help you to begin to discern between good and bad. It will empower you. It will increase you. It will enable you to, you know, to navigate the life, this, 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 the terrain of life that is treacherous, to walk on that path that leads to eternity, the narrow path. God will give you that grace to run a, a righteous race in, and be victorious on every side in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, that grace to live above sin, to live, to live above reproach, to be blameless before God. Let that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise and we give you glory. You are a child of God. You are born again. And God help you. You need a Bible like this. Amen. I would recommend a new King James Version or probably New Living Translation because it's easier to understand. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, prayerfully ask the Holy Spirit to, to direct you to a Bible based and also uh, a, a praying church, Holy Ghost Faith Church. God will help you. You will not miss you will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we go, I would like us to pray this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. restore unto me everything that the devil has stolen from me. Father, in the name of Jesus, restore my wealth, restore my health, restore my dignity, restore my family, restore my marriage, restore the wasted years, wasted career, wrong pursuit of destiny, restore Holy Ghost, that which the enemy and the tanker worms, the palmer worms and the caterpillar, the years of loss, pursue the wrong agenda, the years of laws following the wrong agenda the, the wrong blueprints holy ghost help me to recover those years help me restore all those years restore my family restore my children restore my son restore my daughter restore her bar restore my marriage restore that brother who has backslidden restore that family bring them back together oh lord restore the church restore your people restore the government restore the business restore destiny restore Restore our life, the eyes, restore the waste, restore any area of your health that the canker worms have eaten, any liver, any part of your liver, any area they have eaten, any area that demons have feasted upon your body. I pray for divine restoration. He will restore health, he will restore your destiny, he will restore your family, he will restore your glory. My God, restore your spiritual virtues, restore your dream life, your prayer life your fasting life, your spiritual life. May God restore your soul, restore your spirit, man. Give you a new spirit, a free spirit. May God renew your spirit. May God restore your family. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. A believing amen. amen. A restoration amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus, the owner of my life. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised in our generation. There is no one like you. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus, the owner of my soul. Alpha Omega, you are worthy to be praised in our generation.
That is somebody's testimony after this season, starting from today, in the name of Jesus. He is worthy of all our praise. Father, Lord, we thank you for today's service. And we ask that there will be a restoration in every dimension, from the, their health to their business, to their career, to family, marriages, their spiritual soul and body, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are coming out to give great testimony for a restoration. God giving you rest on every side. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. A believing amen. Yeah. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in God's house, God's presence, forever and ever. Amen. A big restoration. Hallelujah. hallelujah. A better hallelujah. hallelujah. A glorious hallelujah. Amen. The way you said it, that is the way you happen for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bye now.